hydroxo nitrito n this is nitrito why i told n is it, it is an amphidentate ligand it can coordinate with from nitrogen as well as oxygen if it is nitrogen i write it as nitrito n if it is oxygen i write it as nitrito o hope you understood these no, names you should know about all the negative ligands now it comes to some neutral ligands neutral ligands are named as ns3 is called amin NO is called nitrosyl, CO is called carbonyl, H2O is called aqua. So, when you name the compound, the ligand should be given whatever whether the coordination entity is positive or negative, the name of the ligand will be this. The coordination entity is positive or negative, the name of the neutral ligand will be this. This you should understand. Now, we come to the complex. The first coordination com compound which you are seeing, this case you have to name whatever be the situation from this end to this end, from the left end to right end. So, always the counter ions, its name as it is, we pronounce. If it is potassium, we call it as potassium. If it is sodium, we call it as sodium. No need of telling how many potassium are there. That is why we, you will know how, why it is. This compound you see, first you should identify. The first step to identify is to find out the oxidation state of the central metal ion. The first step was whether the coordination entity is positive or negative that we identified. Second step is what is the oxidation state of central metal ion. What is the oxidation state of central metal ion? You know the whole complex has got a charge minus 2. OH has got a charge minus 1. There are 4 OH minus, so it is minus 4. Total charge is minus 2, so of course zinc will be plus 2. Clear to you? The total charge of the complex is minus 2. From where we got this is since it is plus 1, there are 2 potassium, it is plus 2. So, the entity will be minus 2. So, naturally OH has got a charge of minus 4 since there are 4 OH minus ions. Sing will have a charge of plus 2. Hope you understood. So, the oxidation state of central metal ion I identified and I have written it as plus 2. Now, if the coordination entity is the is a negative ion or the square bracket is negative, the metal name should end with 8, A, T, E. Cobalt, cobaltate, iron, ferrate, gold, orate, silver, argentate, like that the name will be nickel, nickelate, palladium, palladate, like that the name of the metal should end with 8, A, T, E. Hope you understood. What all things I have told you? First, you identify whether the square bracket is positive or negative. For if the square bracket is negative, you should identify what all ligands are there. Then, you have to find out the oxidation state of the central metal ion. I identified it as plus 2. Then, you should know what is, whether if the square bracket is negative, the name of the metal should end with 8. This many things are clear to you. Now, the last thing is you should know how many ligands are there. There are four ligands, but it is a homoleptic complex, same type of ligands. What is OH called? What is OH called? It's called a hydroxo. How many hydroxo? Four hydroxo. So it is tetrahydroxo. For naming the complex, you have to start from left, then in the square bracket, first ligand then metal. First ligand, then metal. So, left if I start, it is potassium. Hydroxo, how many? First ligand, then metal. So, hydroxo, kitana? Four. Four, tetrahydroxo. Zing, since the square bracket is negative, it should end with eight. Zinge, tetrahydroxy. Hydroxo, it is not hydroxy. Hydroxo. Zingate, two. Two, why two? The Wherever we are writing the metal, the oxidation state of central metal ion should be written as Roman numeral. As soon as the metal's name is written, its oxidation state should be written in Roman numeral. Is it clear to you? One more we do. Here you see, I have to start with the sodium. So, it is sodium. Oxidation state of aluminum, the whole square bracket is 3 minus. So, oxidation state of aluminum will be 
oxalate ion it is 2 minus each oxalate is 2 minus it is a bidentate ligand so 3 2s are 6 minus 6 if the total oxidation state of minus 3 so aluminum will be naturally plus 3 since the square bracket is negative it is called as aluminate within the square bracket you have to write the roman numeral 3 so from here if i start sodium tri oxalate 3 oxalate so ligand first then metal tri oxalate aluminate 3 sodium tri oxalate aluminate 3 next compound you see i'm starting with from here potassium how many chlorine tetra chlorido it is not chloro <coughs> chlorido palladium palladate palladate oxidation state is 2 plus 2 so palladate 2 so i have written it here remaining there are two questions two more question this case oxidation state of nickel is 0 since the square bracket is 0 so i need to write tetra tetra carbonyl it is carbonyl tetra carbonyl nickel oxidation state is what nothing so no need of writing the oxidation state tetra carbonyl nickel this is sodium cyanide how many two dicyano gold so o8 oxidation state this is minus 1 cyanide is minus 2 cyanide is minus 2 one cyanide is minus 1 total cyanide is minus 2 total charge is minus 1 so what will be the oxidation state of gold plus 3 sodium dicyano orate 3 hope you understood if the square bracket is negative how to name it this is a sure shot sure board examination question every year two nomenclature is being asked so you should practice it now it comes to the next category where the square bracket is positive second type of compound where the square bracket is positive see this is co and s3 five times co3 cl outside the counter ion is cl so of course its charge is minus one the square bracket is plus one so we have to find out the oxidation state of cobalt so carbonate is two minus ammonia is neutral so zero so what is the oxidation state of cobalt here it has to be plus one this is minus two so of course it is plus three you need to name from left to right ligands alphabetically left to right ligands alphabetically no eight with the metal earlier we have written eight with the metal if the square bracket is negative here no eight with the metal so how to write first ligand then metal alphabetically amine come first so penta amine carbonato cobalt 3 chloride penta amine carbonato cobalt 3 chloride here you see oxidation state of the metal is plus 3 you calculate penta amine cobalt 3 chloride similar way you write the name of this particular compound you, this is your homework textbook there are so many index questions given in this chapter you go through the index questions and do the needful you have to do it as a homework at home in your textbook it is given uh, isomerism and details which you are uh, able to understand when you go through you go through the textbook content of isomerism structure and stereo isomerism in detail it is given now you we come to the valence bond theory which give you an idea about how the complexes are formed valence bond theory has a uh, given uh, how the complexes are formed when ligand combined with the central metal ion ligand uses its ns orbital n minus 1 d orbital for us if it is for us it is 3d and 4p ns n minus 1 d nb orbitals for hybridization and geometry formation we are discussing the lig uh, complex having coordination number 4 first case you see ni cl4 ligands according to its capability of shifting electrons inside or the two according to their field strength we say they are categorized as strong and weak ligands according to the classification chloride is a weak ligand cyanide is a strong ligand you can see carbon monoxide ammonia and cn minus are strong ligands water oh minus cl minus br minus are weak ligands now you see nickel 
In the case of nickel, the oxidation, uh, the atomic number is 28, 3d8, 4 s2, as you know. Nickel is in plus 2 oxidation state. Of course, from the outer orbital, the electron will go. This is a mistake. Always you commit, you re remove electron from inner D. No, the outer orbital is 4s, electron will go from 4s. You can make out from here, then Ni2 plus 3d8, 4s0, 4p0. Chloride is not a strong ligand. So, the outer orbitals are used for hybridization. So, what will be the hybridization? We need 4 chloride to com combine. So, the hybridization will utilize 4 orbitals. So, it will be sp3 hybridization. The hybridization is what? sp3. Which orbitals are used? Outer orbitals are used, not the inner D. Outer S and P are used. So, they are called outer orbital complexes. Since there are unpaired electrons in it, they are paramagnetic. The spin is not paired, so they are spin free, yeah, high spin complexes. Outer orbital complexes in the outer orbitals are used, they are spin free, yeah, high spin paramagnetic complexes. The, since the hybridization is sp3, the geometry is tetrahedral. Hope you understood. Hybridization is sp3, geometry is tetrahedral. Similar case you come and uh, you see here. Here is it is NiCN42 minus. This case, this is as usual nickel 28, nickel 2 plus. Here, when it comes to the hybridization, cyanide is a strong field ligand which is capable of shifting this electron to here. So, this electron is being shifted inside. So, this d orbital made empty by cyanide because of its strong field. So, the inner d orbital is utilized for hybridization. So, the hybridization is dsp2. The hybridization is dsp2 and the geometry is square planar. It is not tetrahedral, it is square planar. Since the inner d orbital is utilized, it is called inner orbital complex. There are no unpaired electrons. So, it is diamagnetic and this is called spin paired or yeah, low spin complex. Hope you understood the difference of uh, tetrahedral complexes and square planar complexes. This is a sure question in examination. Similar way you see coordination number 6. As you know, they, will, they are octahedral complex co compounds. Ammonia, as you know, it is a strong field ligand which can induce pairing. Cobalt, as you know, it is 27, 3D7, 4S2, 4P0, 4D is also there which is empty. When it is cobalt 3 plus 2 electrons from here, 1 electron from here will go. So, it is 3D6. When the hybridization has to happen, ammonia is a strong ligand, it will shift this electron from here to here, this electron from here to here. You see, these two electrons are shifted here, so made these two orbitals empty. That two orbitals you are finding here. There are six ammonia has to come, we need six orbitals, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, the hybridization will be D2, yes, P3. When it bonds, you will get an octahedral compound of CONH3 6 times 3 plus, which is an inner orbital complex, inner D orbital is used, which is an inner orbital complex and it is a paramagnet, it is a diamagnetic compound, it is a spin paired or yeah, low spin compound. Come to COF6 3 minus, this case you can see F is not able to pair the electrons, so these electrons remain unpaired so that it cannot be shifted here. So, the outer D is utilized. We need 6 orbitals, 1, 2, 3, 4 only available with us. So, we take 4 D. So, 2 orbitals from 4 D. So, S, P3, D2. So, the hybridization is S, P3, D2. It is a highly paramagnetic compound, high spin compound and it is spin free compound it is called. So, the uh, Geometry is octahedra in both the cases. This case hybridization is D2SP3, here it is SP3D2. Valence bond theory has got many disadvantages. So, we have developed a theory which is called, scientists have developed a theory called crystal field theory, which rectified all the problems of valence bond theory, though it also has got many drawbacks. Now, you see what are the points which crystal field theory says. A metal in absence of a ligand, it has got no disturbance or no disturbance in the sense, no repulsion from other electrons of other ligands. In the sense, the orbitals in the particular central metal ion, 
the orbitals are safe, the electrons need not face any repulsion from an outside place. Central metal ion and when the ligand approaches the central metal ion for coordination, there will be a repulsion between the electrons of the central metal ion as well as the electrons of the ligand. Means that this theory is purely based on electrostatic interaction between the electrons of the central metal ion as well as the ligand. Now you see ligands are considered as point charges, fine points coming from far away towards the central metal ion. The metal, central metal ion was in a stable state. When the ligand approaches the central metal ion, of course the electrons in the central metal ion face repulsions. So that the degeneracy, degeneracy the term degeneracy means all d orbitals in the central metal ion was having same energy. That same energy term we denote as degeneracy. When the ligand approaches, the degeneracy lost means the orbitals will have, have to face a repulsion. So the similar energy or same energy it will not have now. How? That we will see. Now in absence of a ligand, it is written the point 3, the all 5D orbitals in a metal are degenerate. You can go through the first to last point. Electrostatic interaction between the central metal ion and the ligand CFT specifies. Ligands are point charges approaches the metal from far away. In absence of a ligand, all 5D orbitals are identical, means uh, having same energy, so we call it as degenerate. When the ligand approaches, the degeneracy lost. Now, you know, you have studied in class 11, the structures of dxy, d orbitals are 5 type, dxy, dyz, dxz, dx square minus y square and dz square. dxy, dyz and dxz lies in between the axis, x square minus y square lies along the axis, z square also lies along the axis. So, 3 orbitals xy, xz and yz lies in between the axis whereas x square minus y square and z square lies along the axis. So, children, you tell me one thing, if the ligand approaches a central metal ion along the axis, so the orbitals along the axis will face more repulsions. For example, if I draw it here, the metal here, if the ligands approaches the central metal ion along the axis, these are the axes with which we say, na? the ligand approaches a central metal ion along the axis, means d x square, x square minus y square and d z square face more repulsion. In an octahedral complex, the ligands due to the geometry approaches along the axis. So, these orbitals face more repulsion. The degeneracy will be lost. First, all